Bartholomew Roberts is nowadays recognized as the most successful pirate after capturing 470 ships. Well, at least 250 of those were small fishing shallops, and an additional 50 to 100 were fishing craft of a similar size. The most valuable prize he ever took, the Sagrada Familia, he lost in a mutiny. I don't think Robert should be recognized for a metric as boring as how successful he was. Rather, what an eccentric and comedic character he was. He was incredibly pity, vengeful and hypocritical. He was dictatorial and violent, daring any opposition to challenge him to a duel. Then he got his ass kicked by a wounded, unarmed man. However, he seems to have maintained some sort of eccentric charisma, and was likewise quite literate, possibly even a poet. Like any true picaroon, he was naturally a huge narcissist. He changed his name from John to Bartholomew to appear more distinct. It is believed he designed as many as seven pirate flags. However, he was never very creative with naming his ships. When discussing Robert's ship, uh, a lot of you probably think of his ship seen in Assassin's Creed 4. A massive three-decker with black sails, bristling with heavy cannons. The Royal Fortune. The problem is that Robert's captained five different ships named the Royal Fortune. Either Roberts really liked that name, or he was deliberately looking to confuse contemporary writers and future historians. To clear away this confusion, we won't be looking at just one ship in this video, but all of the ships personally captained by Roberts. The first ship that Roberts commanded was the Royal Rover. He was elected her captain after the death of his previous captain and mentor, Howell Davis. The Royal Rover wasn't always a pirate ship, and has a rather deep history. She was originally a British naval ship captured in 1730 by Flemish corsairs in Spanish service. These corsairs operated out of the city of Ostend, located right in the bottleneck of the English Channel, through which several valuable trade routes flowed. This made it a favorite port for the Flemish privateers, who were reasonably called Ostenders. At sea they flew the Red Cross of Burgundy on a white field. They had a notorious fighting reputation, and pirates would often avoid them. Having been captured from the British, the ship was renamed Marquis del Campo, and carried out with 30 guns. When the war ended, she was converted into a merchant ship and traveled to Africa. Howell Davis found her anchored off Cape Three Points, and wanting to impress his crew, he decided to engage. The battle lasted from noon until next morning, in which dozens of pirates and Ostenders died. Both ships were terribly damaged, but Howell claimed victory. He had the Marquis repaired, mounted with 32 cannon and 27 swivels, and renamed the Royal Rover. Davis was a master of trickery and subterfuge. Though he now commanded a heavily armed ship, he preferred to scare his enemies into submission. One of his favorite tactics was vaporing. When sailing into a port or closing in on a ship, the rover would hoist her black colors. The crew would get drunk, start dancing and wave cutlashes. Fiddles played, drums beat and trumpets blared, and the men fired continuous fusillades and cannon barrages. Pirate crews were huge, and this noise would have been sudden, overwhelming and terrifying. It was able to make entire fleets of anchored merchants surrender. Roberts would later adapt this tactic as his favorite. After Davis died, Roberts was elected captain of the Royal Rover. With her he bombarded the town of Principe and sailed next to Brazil, where he captured the Vice Admiral right from under a merchant fleet of 48 ships. This Vice Admiral, the Sagrada Familia, was the richest prize of his career. However, Robert's arrogance eventually got the best of him. Having captured a sloop, he brazenly decided to use it to pursue a brigantine, leaving the Royal Rover in the hands of his quartermaster. He had also forgot to bring provisions aboard the sloop. Anyway, the crew aboard the Royal Rover had enough of Robert's kind of being a dick and decided to desert him. They sailed next to St. Thomas, where the Royal Rover was captured. The crew were taken to Basseterre and hanged, whilst the Royal Rover was burned. Having lost the Royal Rover, Roberts made the sloop his flagship, optimistically naming her The Fortune. Originally she was a merchant sloop from Rhode Island, called Princess. Though The Fortune was kinda unremarkable, her name was certainly befitting, as it catapulted Roberts into his glorious career. However, it was a rocky start. Twice he had to narrowly dodge pirate hunters. In one engagement he was only able to escape after dumping all the guns and heavy cargo overboard. Next he sailed to Newfoundland, where he was able to rearm the fortune with 12 cannons stolen from merchant ships. He also bought cannons from the fishing port of Trepassi, which he occupied for several days. After capturing the first ship that would become the Royal Fortune, the Old Fortune was delegated to a concert ship. Roberts used her to pursue faster vessels 
and to start engagement. She almost went under during Robert's attack on Basseterre, when the fort cannons tore her to shreds. Roberts kept her for a few more months, until finally burning her at Bahia de Samana, having then acquired a superior consort. At Trapassi Harbor, Roberts captured 250 fishing shallops and 22 ships. To prevent her escaping, he had everyone disabled, except for a merchantman from Bristol, commanded by Captain Copplestone. We don't know the name of this ship, nor her rigging. One historian claimed that she was two-masted, square rig brig, carrying 16 guns. Charles Johnson claims that she was a galley, meaning a full-rigged ship propelled by oars. Briggs performed very well with oars, so it's likely that Johnson just meant a brig with oars. Whilst Robert's crew went ashore to party, he himself stayed aboard to oversee the refitting. He mounted her with 18 cannons, and likely made her lighter and more seaworthy for his nefarious purposes. Local carpenters were forced to help in the looting and repairs, though they were paid for their services. Though Roberts made the galley his flagship, we don't actually know for certain if he named her the Royal Fortune. Charles Johnson said that she wasn't, but some modern historians disagree. In the end it doesn't really matter, because Roberts abandoned the galley shortly thereafter. Around three weeks after leaving Trapassi, Roberts came upon a French flotilla of six sail near Louisbourg, capturing all of them. The finest of the French vessels was a full-rigged ship of 220 tons, which Roberts kitted out with 32 cannons, making her equivalent to a 6th rate navy frigate. He made her his new flagship and had her renamed Good Fortune. With his new powerful flagship, Roberts wrought havoc across Nova Scotia, capturing and destroying fishing and merchant ships alike. When autumn came knocking, he sailed south to the Caribbean. A few weeks later, when careening her at St. Kitts, he decided to rename her the Royal Fortune. He attacked the port of Basseterre and seized ship after ship. In spite of recent repairs, the Royal Fortune had begun leaking. At Tortola in the Virgin Islands, Robert seized a 22-gun brig and made her his new and third Royal Fortune. He kitted her out with 32 cannons and within a three-day period managed to capture 14 French and English ships. His greatest prize was a Dutch interloper anchored at St. Lucia. Dutch interlopers were forbidden to trade with the British under navigation acts but were known to carry large amounts of coin. Caribbean colonists would often trade slaves with them. The interloper itself carried only 30 guns and 90 men, and though they were surrounded by 350 pirates and 3 ships, they kept up fighting for 4 hours. After sustaining heavy losses, the pirates boarded the interloper and spared not a single soul. The Dutch ship was one of Robert's bloodiest but most valuable prizes. Having been repaired and refitted, she was kitted out with 51 cannon, she would become the most powerful ship of his career. A Danish prisoner described her crew and armament as follows. Robert's ship is manned with about 180 white men and about 48 French Creole Negroes and has mounted 12 8-pounders, 4 12-pounders, 12 6-pounders, 6 8-pounders and 8 4-pounders. And in her main and foremast has 7 guns, 2 and 3-pounders and 2 swivel guns upon her mizzen. Four months later, Roberts returned to St. Lucia Finally, there anchored another large interloper, with 75 men and 22 guns. Roberts attacked, and though heavily outgunned, the battle lasted many hours. The Dutchmen put out fenders and booms to prevent boarding. The pirates kept up suppressive fire with muskets and swivel guns, allowing a boarding party led by Thomas Anstis to take the vessel and massacre the crew. Roberts sailed next to Martinique, eager to exact vengeance on that island, which he hated very personally and dearly. He used the Dutch interloper as a decoy, making the local traders think he was there to sell slaves. All of them were made prizes, the captains and crew imprisoned, tortured and murdered. Thirteen of the fourteen sloops were burned. The last one carried the survivors back to the governor with a message. Roberts hoped they should always meet with such a Dutch trade as this was. Having had enough in the West Indies, the royal fortune crossed the Atlantic into Africa, where he continued his rampage. On the 8th of August, 1721, Roberts encountered a frigate Onslow near modern Liberia. Belonging to the Royal Africa Company, she was a slave ship bound for the slave port at Widder. She weighed 410 tons and carried 12 guns. She had three square rigged masts. Being an early 18th century frigate, she had fine lines and was built for speed. Additionally, she carried a cargo worth 9,000 pounds. Since the old Royal Fortune was leaking, Roberts took the Onslow as his flagship and, of course, christened her his fifth and final. Royal Fortune. In addition to being mounted with 40 guns, 
Roberts had the former Onslow altered into a proper sea rover. She was made flush, meaning that the forecastle was removed and the quarterdeck lowered. The flat weather deck was suitable for fighting and boarding. By cutting down its raised sections, windage and weight was reduced, improving speed. The internal partitions, or walls, called bulkheads, were pulled down. This further reduced weight. Normally they were used for keeping cargo from drifting around, and quite unnecessary for pirate purposes. He also might have raised the gunnels, adding extra protection to the men aboard. At her masts, the Royal Fortune flew an English ensign jack, a Dutch pennant, and a black flag at the mizzen peak. I'll discuss Robert's flag more in a video dedicated specifically to them, just like his Royal Fortunes. He had a lot of flags. The last Royal Fortune went on a rampage across West Africa, though she fought no actual battles until Cape Lopez, where Roberts was cornered by the Navy. The Royal Fortune faced off against the HMS Swallow, a fifth rate carrying 50 guns, compared to the Fortune's 40. The British Tars were likewise able to fire three broadsides a minute, compared to the Pirate 2. During the engagement, a great storm raged, soaking the decks and Roberts' crimson clothing with cold rain. Battle began at 11 in the morning, when the Swallow fired a broadside at 20 yards. Roberts had planned to glide past and escape, but the Fortune's missing topmast collapsed and interfered with the mainsail, hindering her severely. As the helmsman panicked, Roberts was shot in the throat by a swivel gun and dropped dead. After a disaster three hours later, the Royal Fortune surrendered. As a prize ship, the Royal Fortune was taken back across the Atlantic, where she was anchored at Port Royal, Jamaica. A massive hurricane struck the island on the 28th of August, 1722. Only six ships survived, whereas 50 other boats sank, including the Royal Fortune and her consort, Little Ranger. Her wreck has not been discovered or identified to this day. Huge thanks to my generous supporters over on Patreon. Cole Freer, Max Dweck, Michael Jantz, Rachel, Blunderbomb and Lockhart. If you want to support me monetarily, please check out the links to PayPal and Patreon in the description below. Otherwise, please give the video a like and a comment, so the algorithm will spread it to more viewers. Or why don't you share the video with a friend? Cheers!